Here are 10 useful techniques that you should know for using Pages on your Mac. So Pages is the free word processor that Apple provides for your Mac. If you want to go beyond the basics, here are 10 techniques to try. First, when you create a new document in Pages, you get a document that starts with you writing body text. You want it to be different, just change everything right away. So I'm going to change to a different font here, and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, and I can change other things as well. Let's make the text color a dark gray, for instance. And let's say I want this to be how my documents start. All you need to do now is update the body style. Now I can go to File, and then I'm going to Save as Template. And I'm going to save it to the template chooser like this. I'm going to name it Blank 2. And now I've got this under here in my templates. I'm going to go in Pages Settings. And I'm going to set for new document, use template, and change that template to this blank two that's under my templates like this. So now when I do file new, notice it starts an untitled document and notice the body text is the font, the size, and the color that I want. Now let's say I'm working on a document. So I do a little writing and then I save. I'll use Command S to save, and I'll save this to the desktop like that. Now, let's say I go in, I add another line like that, and I use Command S to save again, and then another, and then Command S again, and then another line after that, and Command S. Every time I used Command S, it saved a version of the document. Now, let's say I delete this line right here, and later on, I decide this is an important paragraph and I want to get it back. So I can go now to File and then Revert To and Browse All Versions. And when I do that, I can go back to the previous version there and there is that text. I can actually select it in here and copy if I want, or I can use Restore to restore it to this version of the document. And when you close a document like this and then you open it again like that, it still remembers these. If I go to File and Revert To, you can see I can even go back to my previous save after I've made changes. I can browse all versions and go and find that paragraph that I accidentally deleted. By the way, if you find these videos valuable, consider joining the more than 2,000 others that support MacMost at Patreon. You get exclusive content, course discounts, and more. You can read about it at macmost.com slash Patreon. So in addition to being able to type math normally, you can actually insert complex equations using insert and then equation. And it could use either the latex or math ML syntax here to type something. So you could just type something like this and you could see what it will bring. But if you did something like say, using the caret here to take five to the seventh power, you could see that it actually builds the equation the way you would write it on paper. You could even use math symbols, like for instance, slash int for integral, and then you can type something there like that. So there's a lot of different things you can do. Search for latex math reference, and you'll find a bunch of different cheat sheets and guides for what you can use and what it will look like. Now, however you add an image into a pages document, you can, of course, resize it, and you could set its arrangement here, like to stay on page or move with text. You could also mask it. So with an image selected, you can go to Format, and then look for image and you can mask this shape and it gives you a selection of shapes here. For instance, let's use the rounded rectangle shape and you can see the shape is there now and this is the area that will be displayed when you click done. If you stretch it or change any property of it, like I'll drag this little green dot here, you can change that. You can also resize it inside of the mask. You can drag around to show a different portion and you click done and you can see now it's masked. You can even select it and then go to Format Style. And if you apply a border to that shape, the border will be applied. Even a shadow will be applied there. And you've got now a masked image with a border and a shadow. Now, if you want to go with a shape that's not listed in the menu, you can use anything in here. So I'll go to Nature here, bring up this tree shape, and then I can drag and drop the image into the tree like that. And you can see now I'm masking with this shape right here like that. Now, of course, in a document, you can select some text and copy it and then paste it somewhere else. 
but you can also copy not the text, but the actual formatting. If you go to Format, you'll see there's Copy Style, which instead of Command C, is just Option Command C. So I can use that, and then I could select some other text like that and use Option Command V and paste the style. Keeps the words, but it brings in the font, the color, and everything else. Of course, if you're gonna do this a lot, what you really wanna do is investigate using both paragraph styles and character styles for this. Now, if you need to see how many characters or words or paragraphs there are in your text, you can go to view and then show word count right there. And then you get words right here. But if you click on it, you can switch to characters without spaces, with spaces, words, paragraphs, or pages. Any of these can be very useful when you're writing to keep track of how big your document's getting. You can also click and drag this control and put it anywhere you want. So you can put it here in the upper right-hand corner, for instance, to get it out of the way. Here's a weird one. Let's say you need to put text throughout your document and you wanna be able to change what that text is very easily and it will change throughout the document. You can do that using tables. So I'm gonna click here to create a table and just create the simplest table here with no header, rows, or columns. So I've got that now and I'm gonna reduce it to just being one cell like this and even shrink this down. And I'm gonna put whatever I want in here. And then I'm also going to, with format table, going to change the table outline to none. So it's basically just a text box now, except since it is an actual table, I can use formulas with it. I'm gonna to go to format, arrange, have it stay on page so I can move it wherever I want. And I'm going to option drag to create a second copy of this. And in the second copy, I'm going to change this text to a formula, I'm going to use equals, but what I'm actually going to do is just have it reference this cell. And you can see it says table one, A1. So now when I click the green button there, it actually will echo whatever's here. If I change this to something else and then exit the table, notice this will pick it up. I can actually make other copies of this and I can put them in different places throughout my document. And whatever I change this to, these will now reflect. So this kind of all sorts of utility uses when creating documents. An interesting technique at the beginning of chapters and sections that you may see in books is to use something called drop caps, where the first letter or the whole first word is larger than the rest. Just put your cursor somewhere here in the paragraph that you want. And then under format and then style, go down to drop cap, turn that on, and then you could pick from a variety of different styles here. So for instance, I could use this one just like that. If you wanted to include more characters, like maybe the entire first word, you can do that as well, or maybe it'd only be two lines instead of three lines. There are a lot of other different options, as you can see right here. You've got a lot of control. For instance, I can turn on a background shape like that. Now, sometimes you may wanna create charts, like organizational charts or flow charts, things like that. So I'm gonna use a shape here. I'm gonna use a rounded rectangle, and I'm gonna set this to stay on page, and now I'm going to option drag to create a few copies of it. And I could actually enter text in here if I want. But what I really wanna do is connect these with lines. So you can do that if you go to insert and then go to line, let's use the right angle kind, and it creates this. And if I drag an end to one of these shapes, it snaps to it like that. Let's insert another one like this. And I'm going to have this snap here and here. I can grab that green dot that's the middle part and guide it to how it should look. So I can do something like this. And then the cool thing is, if I move these shapes, the lines will stay connected like that. And when you're working in pages, you have a page size. If I go to document here on the right, I can see that it's US letter, but I can change it to say US legal or one of these other sizes. You could also create a custom page size but you can't do it here. Instead, you have to go to File and then Page Setup. And under Paper Size, you can manage custom sizes. And here you can create something unusual. I'll just call it Untitled. I could say I want it to be seven inches by seven inches. And here are the margins and all of that. Say OK. And now you can see it changes to Untitled. It shows you your custom sizes here at the bottom. And I've got a seven by seven page. So there are a bunch of tips that I hope you find useful. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.